Society has huge expectations on us. Look how it's supposed to be during the holidays. First of all, ask yourself, what do you want from this holiday season? Did you push record? <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. Hi, Paige. Well, it's that time of year. Uh, the holidays are once again around the corner. And it's funny, you and I were talking, you know, off camera about everything that's coming here. We thought, why don't we look at the hustle and bustle of the holidays, and maybe in a more comical way, and learn to actually embrace <clears throat> holiday dysfunction. What do we mean by that, Paige? <laughs> Well, what we mean, Silka, is you mean to tell me that you and all of our viewers out there, your holidays don't match perfectly to the commercials that we see running for the next month and a half on how the holidays should be, everybody getting along, everybody can't wait to see everybody, and the food, the food is fantastic, <clears throat> and the food meets everybody's needs and expectations, oh, and the presents, you get everything that you want, and the weather is perfect, and there's no flights that are late, and flights caught up in snow, and, and you have lots of money for everything you need to get, <laughs> presents, food, um, anything that you need for people spending the night in your space for a good amount of time. Does <laughs> sound absolutely fantastic? You know, why do we put that pressure on ourselves and what, what can we do to actually enjoy the holidays? Not taking away from all the effort people do put into it, but you know, it, it does tend to create more stress than joy, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, because there's a lot of expectations, whether you have expectations for yourself, for how you think it should be, others having expectations. Society has huge expectations on us. I mean, like I said about the commercials, look how it's supposed to be during the holidays. And I say is, throw it out. The reality is this. First of all, ask yourself, what do you want from this holiday season. Second thing is, what do I need to take care of myself if I step into the holiday dysfunction? Be clear about that. Third of, what boundaries do I need to practice before I get in to the game of the holiday dysfunction? Practice them in front of a mirror, say it out loud, be strong about what you want. Um, so those are good first three tips of what you can do as you gear up for this holiday dysfunction. Well, I know that in, in you know, in my life, and again, we, you know, we bring what we live or, or live what we, whatever we say. <laughs> But I know I, I, I went through that. My, you know, being German, especially, I was raised where the holidays, there was just expectations of what you, what you were going to do, what you were going to bake, you know, what time you're going to eat, uh, how the table was set, et cetera, et cetera. And frankly, I didn't enjoy the holidays. It, it was, as a child, it was stressful to me. And, you know, then growing up, trying to, to you know, do what my mother did. So anyway, long story short, you know, I, I haven't used the China in a long time. And you know what? We've had more fun during the holiday. So is, that's kind of the stuff that maybe you're talking about as well, setting yeah, boundaries or one, expectations. Yeah, that's one expectation. And there's so many other things because one never knows what another person is grappling with during this time of year, whether there's health issues, whether there's an impending death, whether somebody has died and they're not going to be there for the first time, whether there's a separation or a new marriage or new kids coming into the fold, stepkids, what, whatever you would like to name them. Um, if you have to travel and you really don't want to get on a plane and travel, there's so many different things that can go on. And there's also what if you're nowhere near family and you would like some holiday dysfunction because you feel alone during the holidays? So there's so many different scenarios, <clears throat> excuse me, of what can occur during holiday dysfunction. Well, and, and we, we were joking about it. You just brought up a great point. You know, it, it's like if you're in the middle of the dysfunction, you are you're feel like you're going crazy. You're just, oh, God. But if you don't have it, you miss it. And, and I think that's where we're joking is that learning to embrace and love the dysfunction. And I think there's shades of gray of, of holiday dysfunction. Of, I don't know if someone really misses completely the dysfunction, but they might 
to have their memory pick out just the good things about when they're with their family until they get in there and they go, oh my God, what the hell? Or you can also be in it and go, oh my God, what the hell? This is great. So, you know, it's all perspective. It's all where you come from. It's all what you've experienced through the years and where you are in your life now. And my biggest thing is, please don't always think that the commercials that run, excuse me, have to match what your holiday looks like. Absolutely not. That's society's way of what holidays are supposed to be. Create what you want Figure out what you need for the holidays and make it happen. Or don't. Stay home. Or go on a trip. I, I It's funny. I uh, we, we were just together at a, a family function at you know with Paul's uh, family. Uh, you know we I think we've talked before. We all have a great relationship with his ex wife yeah. and kids. And matter of fact, we do Thanksgiving and holidays. Wonderful Christmas together. Uh, they go way out. Both both Paul's ex wife and his sister. You know, the, the, I mean, it's like a little Christmas village. You know, in each one of the houses. But it also causes them an, a, a ton of stress. And one of the comments was, was, oh, gosh, I have so much to do. I don't know how I'm going to get ready. You know, I still have to do this and this. And, and I still have to put up two more trees. And I'm thinking, no, you don't. That's the thing. Always ask yourself, who am I doing this for? Am I doing this out of sheer love and joy? Or am I doing it to get validation or get acceptance or get noticed? Always ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because if it's not a sheer love and joy, you might want to rethink why you're doing it and how you're doing it. It doesn't mean you got to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It just means shift it a little bit as to how it can work for you this holiday season. And, and you know, I didn't mean to imply that they're not doing it out of sheer love and joy. <laughs> but it was that little comment that it wasn't so much about about them as it really applied to me because that's how I used to be. I, I felt an obligation to put up the tree a certain way to, you know, and, and I remember one year I just didn't have time to get the garland around and so it didn't go up. And you know what? Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. Nobody <laughs> exactly cared. Right. <laughs> Nobody noticed that you didn't have that one Dickens village up there or that the gingerbread house wasn't finished or half of it had caved in. Um, so, yeah, so remember that when we're getting ready for the holidays, we're viewing it out of our eyes of perfectionism. No, 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 no. Life is not about perfectionism. It's about messiness. So if you can jump in and deal with the messiness and if you can jump in while the dysfunction is going on and step back and witness, that's a different way of looking at things. So the bottom line is this. However you want to have your holidays, whoever you want to have it with, whatever you need, whatever you need to say, go ahead and do it. So there's no one way of jumping in to the holidays that are right around the corner from us. And on that note, we do want to wish everybody happy holidays as the stress season begins. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Bye-bye. <laughs>